，只有民族的才是世界的。中国的优秀的这个传统化，它也应该是为世界所享用。用汉服作为一个很好的一个元素，或者是作为一个呃我们说的一个切入点，来反映了我们九零后。啊，甚至后面的是零零后，他们对于中国文化的啊，中国传统文化的这样的一个认识，还有责任和担当。宽袍、大袖 ，and everything else， 汉服。There's something getting youngsters in China excited about the ancient ways. The Han Fu has come to symbolize a meeting of the old and new, with a potential consumer market of 400 million people. What's behind this growing trend, and what does it mean for Chinese people? Girl City finds out. The revival of Han Fu, or traditional costumes of the Han Chinese, started in 2003, when a man named Wang Letian wore self-made Han Fu on the streets of Zhengzhou in China. Wang's initiative. Resonated with young people across the globe. Now, in 2021, Hanfu communities have made homes far away from Zhengzhou. In this episode, we have invited four Hanfu enthusiasts from across Asia to share their Hanfu stories. We'll also talk to a professor of fashion to explore how the Hanfu trend traveled beyond borders. First, meet Gong Pan Pan from Singapore, popular on social media as the Hanfu Girl. She came up with fusion ideas mixing Hanfu with Western pop culture. She also started to blog in 2017, explaining the Chinese culture. People can say, "Oh, okay, I really know so much about this Western figure, so I don't really need to read up on it." But okay, so by tra transposing that, I could kind of sort of understand this Chinese figure a lot easier. As compared to for them to read from scratch, most of the Chinese community, because、uh, we are English educated,、uh, don't really have that kind of strong connection to the Chinese, uh, you know, Chinese uh, ancient past, except for TV dramas. So when they see us in you know Hanfu,、um, the first thing they will say is, "Oh, Chang'e," you know, the moon moon goddess, and that's all they they know most of the time. I get like some messages from diaspora, it's not just in Singapore, but like, you know, overseas, they're Chinese, and they say, "Oh, I love to read what you write because、uh, it allows me to know more about history in a language I can relate and understand." Actually, the Malaysian Han Fu movement was started in 2007. When it started in 2007, when it started, we launched the first annual Hanfu Christmas Festival. Every year, we would do it once. 那我们曾经呢有收过的人员呢是来自加拿大，嗯、呃，中国香港，中国大陆，然后新加坡。那在这个生活营呢，主要呢我们是把这个课程的部分，就是觉得有一些基本的一些资料，汉服的形制，或是一些华夏的礼仪，都在这个生活营里面呢，就会教导大家，就可能提供，因为多数来参加的人呢，可能。不了解我们华夏到底有什么东西，所以呢，通过这个生活营呢，其实就是播下一个小小的种子，让他们可以通过这个生活营呢，认识我们华夏的服装，然后呢，跟礼仪的部分。以我身处的高雄市来说好了，每年会有一场就是大明宁靖王祭祀，在十二月的第一周的周末，很多同袍从台湾的四处。聚集到高雄市的湖内，有一个宁靖王爷的衣冠冢，我们就是聚集在那边举行祭祀典礼这样。不过大家都会去关注西塘啊，那个汉服文化节的一些影片，就是好想去，<笑>大家都是好想去。汉服 has yet to be more widely understood in Asia, and it is often mistaken for the Japanese kimono. So what can Hanfu learn from kimono? 那我们知道，其实很多的运动呢，尤其是洋化运动，都是起来源于青年群体，就是青年群体在成长过程中对现有的这样的一种文化的啊一种突破，尤其在海外，就是在远离你的祖国的时候，它能够形成一个民族的共识，形成一个凝聚力。
啊，我有一个朋友的孩子，他在日本读书。那么在参加这个毕业典礼的时候呢，那日本呢，他有一个传统，他所有的毕业生呢都会穿他们的传统的服饰，有和服，男生女生啊都会穿。但是呢，他选择了汉服。那么在当时，他是自己也感受到了，啊，有一种骄傲感，因为穿了这个传统的服饰啊，他感觉到一种特别有一种仪式感。那么近几年呢，就是大量的留学生他会产生另外一种心情，就是一个民族心情，就是我不是呃一个日本人在这里毕业参加毕业典礼，我是作为一个中国人，经过自己的奋斗，呃，达到这一个高度，所以越来越多的人是在这个场合会要想着去穿一件汉服。那么，所以那个时候呢，就会特别特别的忙。每天每天，我就会呃拿着汉服在在车站里面赶来赶去，给他们送送各样各种各样的汉服过去。我们是在二零一九年进行了一个首届的呃汉服和服服饰秀，就是双方想要去突出的一个主题，就是呃我们不要忘了在我们的人生当中，呃这个和服还好，还是汉服还好。对我们人生的呃每一步是起着一个非常重重要的一个一个见证的作用。But which Hanfu style should represent Chinese identity? With 4,000 years of history, Hanfu has evolved with time in ancient China. For example, romantic chest-high ruqun is a typical Tang Dynasty outfit, while Hanfu from Song and Ming dynasties reflect implicit beauty. 其实对于汉服的这样的一个名称或者它的一个定论来讲，现在学界呢并没有一个明确的界定，到底什么是汉服。那只是说，在这个发展过程当中，大家有一些相对的一个共识。那么汉服呢，大家认定呢，它还是一个汉民族的传统服饰。但实际上，现在流行的这个汉服呢，它又不能就说是哪以哪一个朝代呃为一个基准，它应该更多的呢体现的是当代的青年对中国传统文化的一种理想。性的再认识，或者是重构一种创新。但我希望呢，以后就是未来呢，我们可以向这个中国大陆呢学习，可以办这一个好像汉服周啊、汉服日啊，就可以让大家呢一起穿着汉服来参加一个呃千人聚会啊之类的。除了在宁靖王祭上面会有一个小走秀之外，目前是还没有专属于汉服的走秀活动。台湾这边的话是目前还没有，所以我们是希望我们社团能够作为这个召集人去举办一场，让大家都可以来参与的走秀这样。And we wanted to just bring people into this room, which is make believe to be like a courtesan house of Tang Dynasty, and just talk to the courtesans as if if you are it's a bit it's a bit like when people spend an evening talking to the geishas, it's like an evening talking to the Tang Dynasty、uh, courtesans. Uh, we go through about two years of research, and everyone built their character from scratch based on how relevant it is to their their own family life. So everyone has a believable backstory behind it, and you know it's just a very interesting kind of、uh, real make believe kind of、uh, experience. Yeah. 所以在啊、呃、种种的现在的这些文化当中，我们都能感受到一个中国人的这样的文化自信。所以在这样的一个国力的强盛的基础上，在文化的发展的需要上，在世界上需要更多的认识中国的文化上，所以呢，汉服呢得到了啊前所未有的这样的发展。这一批汉服复兴的这样的一个青年的力量的话，那么我认为呢，它未来会成为我们中华优秀文化传统啊复兴的主力军。In our last episode. We will interview Hanfu enthusiasts in China to see how they feel about wearing Hanfu. Stay tuned for all that next Saturday on Girl City. If you want to know more about girls in Asia, make sure you subscribe to Girl City.